Hi hey guys, it's Lou. I'm back for a video. Uh, today I'm going to do uh, what I've been spinning recently on my turntable. Um, not showing any, uh, except for maybe one LP that I've shown in past videos. Um, so this is a recent uh, vinyl spins and I've also got a couple of uh, CDs to throw, throw in. Uh, first of all, what we have playing right now in the background, I don't know how well you can hear it. But it's this album here, Tin Machine, David Bowie, um, back from the late 80s. Uh, of course, this is the band that Bowie put together. I believe it was after his Never Let Me Down album, which was in 87. Um, then Bowie came back with this uh, band that featured um, on bass and drums the Sales Brothers and on guitar, uh, Reeves Cabrell, who Bowie went uh, on to work with uh, later on on some of his uh, solo albums. Um, this is uh, an album that I would play quite a bit back in the 80s. Um, some of the songs, Heaven's In Here, Under The God, um, Prisoner Of Love. I, I thought this was a great Bowie album. It was, it, it was different from anything that he had done. Um, certainly in the 80s and had a harder edge to it and uh, the songwriting and the lyrics um, in my opinion was excellent and it's still something that I that I play today I didn't get the second uh, Tin Machine album not quite sure why um, but this one certainly um, still stands up today in my opinion uh, a band who some of you might know and some might not. Um, I saw this band mentioned recently in uh, Steve's video, Flipside CT, and it's a band from Iceland called Sigurós. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce the name. This is their most, um, I think it's their most recent album from 2013, um, pronounced Kavikur, I believe. Not quite sure what it means. Uh, this band uh, is a band they don't sing in English and I think they have very few songs they actually sing in Icelandic uh, but a lot of the vocals are apparently uh, some kind of made up language but this is extremely atmospheric uh, and very powerful music highly recommend that you at least check these guys out on, um, on uh, YouTube Show you the gate hold here. Like I said, this is their most recent LP, and um, I think they're definitely worth checking out. Um, like I said, uh, beautiful uh, instrumentation on this. The guitar they use the uh, the. Um, the bow, like Jimi Hendrix used to use back in the 70s. Uh, do yourself a favor and check these guys out. Uh, lately I've been on quite a bit of a King Crimson kick and been playing a lot of their albums. So I'm just going to go through some of the albums and highlight a few things from each one. Uh, classic album. Their very first album. In the Court of the Crimson King, of course, everybody knows this classic cover. And the gatefold. Again, this is their first album with Greg Lake on vocals. Um, the Giles, I believe, brothers is their, their name. Um, Robert Fripp, of course, the leader of the band. This includes the famous tracks uh, in The Court of the Crimson King and um, 21st Century Schizoid Man that has the distorted vocals from Greg Lake. Uh, King Crimson, after that first album for the next three albums, had a very much of an unstable lineup. Greg Lake um, I think sang a couple of songs on their next album and then left the band and the drummer left and the bassist left and they didn't stabilize themselves until this album which is Lark's Tongues and Aspic which was their fifth album 
Um, this is an amazing album. This is probably my, I'm going to say, fourth favorite King Crimson album. Um, but their first, my top five are just unbelievable and probably could fit anywhere on the, uh, the, the thread that Andy had for his subscribers contest for perfect albums. I would definitely qualify this as a perfect album. Um, this album, of course, has the two-part instrumental title track and also has uh, well-known songs Easy Money and Exiles as other highlights. But there's only six tracks on here, but every single one of these songs, you do not want to skip them. Um, and this was, I should mention, the first album from the more stable lineup, which is my favorite King Crimson lineup that included uh, John Wetton on vocals and bass. Uh, the amazing Bill Bruford on drums and um, Robert Fripp on guitar. They also had a violinist, David Cross, that uh, I don't know if he was an official member, member but he certainly played on uh, the next slew of albums. After Lark's Tongue, we have Starless and the Bible Black. Starless and the Bible Black. Um, again, same lineup as before. Uh, and this includes some great songs like Lament and The Great Deceiver. After that, we have my favorite King Crimson album and, and their best in my opinion, Red. And as you can see there, we have John Wetton, uh, Bill Bruford in the middle, and Robert Fripp on the, on the top corner there. Um, this album is amazing. Uh, it includes a title track, Instrumental Red, uh, One More Red Nightmare, and the very, uh, I think a lot of King Crimson fans would say, probably in the top three at least of their uh, top King Crimson tracks, Starless. The band then was broke, uh, did break up after that, um, rather surprisingly, Robert Fripp um, put an end to the band, uh, and John Wetton and Bill Bruford were, I think, quite surprised by that. Um, so they made three studio albums with that particular lineup, and then to fulfill some contractual obligations, came out with this album, which is a live album called USA. Uh, and this was from the Starless and Bible Black tour. Um, they did, oh, it's only a single album, only includes six tracks. Um, it's a great album, but it's a shame that it didn't include, it wasn't done from the Red tour. Uh, King Crimson has a lot of um, live material that's been released now after the fact, um, but ma most of it is on, uh, on CD. So the band, uh, they broke up, that was around 74. Um, that they broke up that lineup of the band uh, and then Bill Bruford went on to play I think in a live version of Genesis uh, and then him and Wetton formed the band um, UK which did one album with that particular lineup together uh, and then it wasn't until 1981 that Robert Fripp um, started up King Crimson again with a new lineup he did bring uh, Bill Bruford back on drums and brought in on guitar and vocals Adrian Ballou. Uh, Adrian Ballou who had previously played with uh, Frank Zappa, um, was seen playing live with Zappa by David Bowie, so then he went and played in Bowie's band um, for a tour. Uh, he also did some touring with the Talking Heads and then after that, uh, joined up with Robert Fripp and King Crimson and they also added Tony Levin who's an amazing bass player on bass so you had Adrian Ballou, Tony Levin, Bill Bruford and Robert Fripp who some people would argue is um, their favorite version of uh, King Crimson and I, and I would certainly put them up there as well and they made this as their first album Discipline from 1981 this again could easily go on the perfect albums list. Uh, you have seven tracks on here. Some of the more uh, famous songs include Elephant Talk. You have the instrumental, The Sheltering Sky. Uh, this was a very different King Crimson, I think, from uh, as compared to the King Crimson in the early to mid 70s. Um, definitely more of an 80s sound on this, but this is an unbelievable album. This would be my second favorite. King Crimson album after um, Red. 
So do yourself a favor and grab both these two albums. That, that lineup um, of King Crimson with Blue and, um, and Levin, Bruford, and Fripp made three albums together in that, um, in that format. The second album is from 1982, Beat, is also a great album. Not as good as, uh, as the first one I showed, Discipline, from 1981, but this is also a great album. And then they, uh, they made one more album, which I haven't played lately, but it's also a great album. It's called Three of a Perfect Pair. It's the one with the yellow cover. Um, and then that King Crimson uh, expanded to a six-member uh, unit and made uh, a cup, three more albums after that, which I, I don't have on vinyl. But what I do have is this box set, uh, CD box set, from the uh, tour that they did in 2014. Uh, they called it the Elements Tour. This box set, um, it, it's more of a, a retrospective of their career, and they just happened to put it out around the same time of their, uh, of their tour. Um, there's no live material on here from that tour. The live material is actually on this single CD. It's called Orpheum, um, which is from uh, their show they did in LA. And there's the, the band on the back. This, this band uh, featured three drummers. Um, uh, Gavin Harrison from Porcupine Tree was one of the three drummers. Um, for some strange reason, Robert Fripp did not invite um, Adrian Ballou to this touring version of King Crimson, which I think was a big, uh, big mistake. Um, Tony Levin did come back on bass from the 80s uh, and 90s lineup, and um, Mel Collins, who was um, on saxophone back in the early... 70s with the band played on this particular lineup this uh this like i said this is only a single cd only has seven songs on here but does have some classics like um starless and um also one more red nightmare is on this as well so that's king crimson uh another band that i've been playing lately which is a band that i um one of my top bands, they have an album coming out actually on May the 5th, tomorrow, which I've ordered, is Slow Dive. So Slow Dive is a band uh, back from the early 90s, which is more times than not associated with the shoegaze uh, movement at that time. This particular album is um, a compilation of uh, singles and EP tracks. It's called Blue Day. Uh, and has some songs like this song called Slow Dive and also Avalyn is a big uh, favorite from the Slow Dive um, for Slow Dive fans. So I've also been playing Slow Dive's first proper LP which is called Just For A Day. This includes the, the song uh, Catch The Breeze. Slow Dive's best album in my opinion Suvlaki. This one I've shown before on I think the Perfect Albums uh, uh, thread. This has the songs Allison and 40 Days, um, Catch the Sun, um, what else is that? Machine Gun is another, oh sorry not Catch the Sun, When the Sun Hits. Um, if you're gonna get one slow dive this would be the slow dive album that I would recommend that you get. And another slow dive that I have is this bootleg uh, called Hide Your Eyes. I believe this is from around the time of Suvlaki. Um, not a great press. It's a blue bootleg, so it's better, you know, at least, at least I've got it. But uh, compared to the albums proper, it's, it's not the, the best of presses. And last but not least, another band that I've been playing lately is Swerve Driver. Who are also associated with the uh, the shoegaze, shoegaze movement back in the 90s. Uh, this is their most recent album from 2015, double LP. It's not a gatefold. Uh, I wasn't born to lose you is the name of the album, 
And uh, for those of you that are Swerve Driver fans um, and don't have this, definitely recommend it. Some amazing guitars and bass on here and uh, Adam Franklin's wonderful um, lazy sort of vocals. So that's it uh, for the recent spins and um, thanks again to anybody who's subscribed to my channel. I want to thank Andy as part of Andy's Vinyl Den. Uh, he did a video um, that gave us a, a bunch of us shout outs and, and uh, appreciate Andy for you doing that and um, thanks a lot. See you later guys.